Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool, and I'm trying to put a little finer point on why the, all the hate on Snap-on. Now, there are a lot of uh, videos that really try to drill down into maybe the Snap-on overall pricing, or the Snap-on credit system, or maybe even the allure of Snap-on, but yet it's out of reach of a lot of people price-wise. Maybe it's targeting uh, certain potentially vulnerable groups in order to get franchises. I've heard of that. I don't know if it's true or not. But some things like, I don't know, the venerable basic snap-on ratchet are like almost go-to. You should have that. No questions asked. It's as if this here, this doesn't count. That's not part of it. Um, new snap-on products that are just absolutely wonderful, like this LN47 ACF or even its little brother. Um, I don't see the hate there. Doesn't work. Uh, wrenches? Yeah, there seems to be a lot of competition now with wrenches and whether or not it's worth um, the price. Well, I don't know. The price is what somebody pays. Um, or when Snap-on comes out with a new design like this teeter-totter uh, flex head locking mechanism that some have had some pretty bad experiences with, or even potentially worse, might be the new 100 tooth ratchet. Now, somebody did mention that they've changed the logo. That was always in the mix, that they were going to take off this old school short run snap on logo. I did a video about that. Um, and where are these ratchets? Are they even on the trucks anymore? Because, well, yeah, everybody's going with the old dual 80 and there are no complaints. I mean, yeah, it's an expensive ratchet, but I don't see the hate there. They save the hate for other things. Well, then there's the screwdriver. Snap-on screwdrivers are overall, I don't know, great. Um, but there are a lot of other screwdrivers that might be a little less expensive or a lot less expensive that still unscrew and screw in fasteners. Um, the craziness of some of the snap-on ratcheting screwdrivers. I love this thing right here. It's a nine inch, um, quarter inch bit uh, hole or quarter inch hex bit holder um, in the tiny snap-on snap -on stubby, reversible. It reverses in the direction that I expect. That's what I like. Um, but these are wildly expensive and they're, I mean, you can get quality or usable um, stubby bit uh, drivers like this under $10. You want to spend between $10 and $20, you're going to have all kinds of choices. Um, so yeah, they're expensive. Um, the Snap-on, I, I absolutely love this thing. This is the Snap-on uh, scraper. It is our carbon scraper. It is not the striking version. Although, you know, I was kind of worried, so I ended up picking up a a PB Swiss version I'm going to try out. This came like paper cutting sharp, you know, for less than the cost of the Snap-on. I don't know, there's that. Snap-on sockets, they almost seem the go-to. Like, no hate there. Pliers, the basic pliers, people seem to accept the price and think, yeah, they're, they're good pliers, but uh, you get into some of the specialty pliers and the price just goes through the roof and people you know, get angry. So I'm not sure what's going on. Where is the line? Is it with the marketing, such as you're not a good mechanic unless you have Snap-on, and that's not fair to say, or is it that the you see something that you want, but the price is so high and you can't really afford it while still doing what you're supposed to do as a responsible citizen? You know, some people go way into debt. Well, there's number three. So some people are angry because Snap-on lets you go into debt. I don't know, debt to me, depending on what you're doing, it's an investment. So the question is whether or not that investment has, you know, ROI, return on investment. Do you get what's uh, necessary out? And a lot of people are saying, especially after my last video where I talked about the pocket garage, a rusty pair of channel locks and an old screwdriver, you can do most things. So you can actually make money by using some really basic stuff. And like I said, that's what launched me on my DIY adventure is I watched somebody with some old rusty tools do something and the moment I saw him do them, I thought I could do that, but I wasn't sure I could do that. It wasn't even how I could do it, it's did I have the confidence. 
And absolutely, what's the worst case? As a DIYer, I hire somebody to fix my mistake and then do it for me. But most of the time, I manage to, you know, limp along and do just fine. But then that comes down to snap-on tools. And you know there are several people on, on YouTube who do snap-on tool videos. We like snap-on tools. Oddly, we tend to have similar watches, too, which is kind of an, <laughs> an unusual chain of events there. But I don't know why people hate on snap-on so much. They can charge a fortune for their stuff. But is it anger over the price that they have the gall to do that or is it anger that you don't want to spend that money or can't afford it or anger that there's something that looks very similar but just says icon instead of snap on kind of similar a few less letters but i don't know um i i wonder why everyone takes it so personally now i don't want you know hate on me for doing this but what is specifically going on here is it the marketing the company, the company politics, the pricing that they have the gall to ask for that, the truck model, the warranty, the release of potentially very expensive but questionable improvements on an old design. Um, yet some of the tools, I mean, literally, I've never, well, somebody will come up with it now, but I haven't heard anyone really complain about a dual 80, that that's what you do. I haven't heard anyone complain about this plier, except why don't they make a smaller one? Well, they did. In fact, they made two smaller ones. But then some other snap-on stuff, it just it sets people off. Now, I don't run around in the snap-on uh, battery-powered tools. I don't use the snap-on scanners. I don't use a lot of the super expensive um, or even mildly expensive snap-on shop tools. So what's up with Snap-on? Why does it draw the eye? Or why is it that, that, that bullseye on the target of tool hate? Is it simply because of the, the price? Or is there something else going on? Because I don't really want to, you know, make them change their ways. I, I used to feel that. You know, gosh, why don't, you know, they, you know how many of these they'd sell if they dropped the price to 30 bucks? Maybe they don't want to. It's their business model. And what got me thinking about it, in all honesty, is to, today, which is uh, Monday, launched the new iPhone 16. And I thought, well, I may change my, my filming habits to use more of a phone instead of a camera. Plus, the, you know, I'm interested in the AI component. It's just expensive. But that's, that's how stuff moves forward. On the other hand, I don't have to buy it. Or I could go buy a used phone off Craigslist. No problem there. But back to Snap-on, what's going on here? If you had to put a sharp point on exactly what is causing that Snap-on hate, what is it? Not general, specific. Let me know in the comments. And with that, Doc out.